Hi everyone, welcome back for another weekend jewelry school. In this session, we are talking about bench blocks and anvils. And bench blocks and anvils are definitely going to be a staple in your studio, and you want to make sure that you get the right tool. A good bench block is going to allow you to hammer and to lay things out without you know, really adding extra cleanup or work to your piece. Because whenever you hammer something, if you are hammering on a surface or with a surface, like for instance, your hammer face that has pits and bumps in it, well, that's gonna transfer to your metal. So let's take a look at the different bench blocks and anvils that I have here in my studio. And we'll kind of look at the pros and cons of each of them. Okay, I have just laid out a number of the different bench blocks that I have here in my studio. And you'll see I have quite a few. And that just happens because I teach a lot of classes and so I would buy different things. And especially once I got going, um, I actually had a few that were gifted to me and then quite a few that I purchased. So let's take a look at kind of our basic bench block. So first thing we have is a four by four inch bench block. Now, in both of these cases, I have these on rubber pads, and you can see that there's a height difference on those. It doesn't really matter, like the size of your rubber pad that you are using, but it is definitely good to have. It's going to protect your, your tabletop surface, and it's also going to help deaden the sound when you hammer with this, which is going to be something that's very important. So definitely lots of ear protection when it comes to using these different bench blocks. Now you can see here, we actually have two different surfaces and hopefully you guys can see that. So one surface is really fine and one is all bumpy and pitted. So this bumpy and pitted one tells me a couple of things. It's a softer material and it's probably just not as well made, whether it wasn't forged or maybe it was cast or whatever the case might be, this is definitely a softer material than this particular bench block. Um, also, a lot of times there will be a lot of different thicknesses. Now, this particular bench block, I believe was actually gifted to me from an old metalsmith. Uh, his daughter, you know, he had passed away long, long, long before and his daughter brought over a box of tools for me and this was one of the things that was in that as, as well as one other that I'll show you guys. But you can kind of see the surface on this. It's awful. I mean, there's a lot of different hammer dings where people have missed whatever it was that they were hammering with their hammer face and so we have a lot of these weird little divots on here. Now, again, like I said, that tells me that this is definitely a softer material. And while this is still going to work and be good for forging things down, for instance, if I take my wire on here and we hammer this down, I'm still going to be able to, but I'm gonna to have to be really, really careful with where I put my piece. Because if I hammer my piece on some of these little dents and divots, well, that's gonna transfer into my metal. So that's something that I really want to watch out for. Now, one of the things that I do kind of like about this block is that we've got some rounded edges. They've taken the time to kind of break that sharp edge here along the sides or that outer edge. So I'm not going to get as, um, I guess kind of a sharp of a divot if I happen to be working kind of close to the end here and if I happen to hit here on the corner, while I will get a divot, it won't be quite as sharp as some of the others. So that's something that you can look at. But this one has actually just been worked, you know, so this one is not a super fancy one is probably one that they just picked up, you know, at a scrap yard, and then they just kind of rounded the edges a little bit to take care of that. So that's something that you can do. Now, my favorites of my bench blocks happen to be these Pepe Tools one. Now, these are three quarters of an inch thick. They have a beautiful surface on them. They're nice and hard. So even if my hammer does miss, I'm not going to get a ding easily on my bench block. So that's something that you kind of want to look at. Now this one does have a little sharper edges and it's also hardened. So if I try to hit this with a file, it's not going to go as smoothly as, you know, a softer metal. But again, you've got some trade-offs there. So I really like the surface of this. It's nice and clean. 
Now, let's talk about some of these others that I might have. So the two that I just showed you were four by four inch bench blocks. Now, let's look at a few other sizes as you can see. Now this is a little tiny one. He's probably like an inch and a half by about an inch and a half. And this guy's really messy and he, he dings up pretty good. You know, he's not, not fantastic, but he's, he's not nearly as soft as that first bench block. And also look, it's kind of grimy and gross. So what's happened here is neglect really. And so it's gotten dirty and it's been moved around or whatever else. And what I can do is I can just take some steel wool and I can remove some of this. Now, if I need to, I can also add either like some baby oil or we can add just kind of like a three-in-one oil type of thing. And that's going to help to uh, remove and kind of help polish up the surface of your bench block as well. So that's something that you can do if you happen to notice that there's a little bit of grime or rust or whatever might be the case on the block. So you can see that that kind of cleaned up pretty good. However, there are still some dings and divots in here. Now this little guy, he's really, really thin. I don't even remember where I got it. I've, I've had it for such a long time. And I use this a lot if I'm going to like center punch something. So I will put this kind of by my flex shafts or by my drill press and that way then I can just put it on here, do my little center punch, and then I'm ready to go. Now, another little block that I just recently picked up not too long ago is by Impress Art. This is one that came in one of their little stamping kits that I, I was uh, using for a little class. And it's a great little block. Its edges are nice and clean, and it also has this beautiful high finish. So that's one, and this is actually made for stamping. So this is a much harder block, a little higher quality, came with little feet that go on the bottom of it to help uh, cushion it. Now, you'll still see that it moves around quite easily, but instead of having a full bench block, we just have the rubber feet here on the bottom. So that's another thing you can even consider, is just get some rubber feet for the bottom of your, of your bench block. So again, I have another one from Pepe Tools. All of these need to kind of be cleaned up here. But I have another one from Pepe Tools. This happens to be the two and a half inch by two and a half inch by three quarter inch. Again, it's got that nice thickness to it, beautiful weight, beautiful finish, and that's again kind of what I'm looking for. Now this block is a four by six. I like the four by sixes because I can lay out an entire bracelet on the one bench block and then I can do whatever else I need to do on here. So it's really handy sometimes to have that extra length with that four by six. This one happens to only be a half an inch thick. This is definitely not a Pepe, but it still has a pretty decent surface on this. And I don't think you guys can see it on the video, but there's actually almost like a, a swirl pattern from when they it went through the planer to uh, kind of finish the surface of that. I don't feel it at all. And so that's not anything that I'm concerned about transferring to my metal. Now the last of my bench blocks that are the flat big ones, this also happens to be one from Pepe Tools. It's an eight by 10 and I've put it onto a 12 by 12 inch uh, rubber mat. This one I absolutely adore. We do so much on this one. I actually make my kids use this block because I don't need to worry about getting, I mean, if, if my blocks, my Pepe ones, I don't have to worry about them actually damaging those anyway. But my kids really like to have this one because when they go to do all of their stamping or whatever else it is that they're going to be doing, they have plenty of room and they're not concerned about, you know, damaging things or anything like that. Again, a very, very hard block. These, they no longer make. And so there's just a handful of them left. These probably run about 100 110 maybe $120 or so, plus your shipping, and they have a lot of weight to them. I would say this guy is probably a good 10, 15 pounds easy. So he's got some big weight to him. But again, nice clean surface. Um, if it's not, I can easily just kind of come in here with that steel wool, kind of clean that up a little bit. My surface is great and we're ready to go. 
So that gives you an idea of what this kind of the, the typical, the square and the, the rectangle blocks and everything like that, those look like. And those are going to be the blocks that you find in most studios. And this is what's going to be fairly common. Now, another thing that is somewhat common in different studios is going to be a, what's called a track anvil. Now, what this is, is a piece of railroad track that has been cut and then they finish it nice and smooth. So you can find these at different places. I believe I bought mine through Hector Ortega and if it wasn't Hector, I apologize. But I believe I got mine through Hector Ortega, but there's also a number of different suppliers that are going to have these online. And I've actually seen some where they'll actually grind a horn onto this as well. So that's another, another option that you have. The thing I like about this one is that you have that little bit of a curved surface here um, because it is a railroad track. So you have more of a curve here, which I really like when I'm doing some different detail on different bracelets or maybe a pendant that needs to curve or something like that. It just gives you a different surface that you are able to work with. Now the final bench blocks that I have in my studio, and I don't even know that these are really offered anymore. So sometimes you can find these and sometimes not. This is one that I received from Kevin Potter a long time ago. And what he had done was taken and actually welded it onto a base. So the thing I like about this is that it has this lovely lip around it. And that way, if I have something that needs to kind of be up off of the table. So for instance, this little loop here, if I needed to hammer over here, but the loop is a little longer, sometimes I run into problems with a, a flatter bench block. And this way, um, things can kind of slip underneath that lip or I can hold underneath it. And then I have easy access to whatever it is that I need to do here. So that's one thing that's kind of cool. Now this was again, another item that was gifted to me a long, long time ago. I believe this came also from that, that jeweler that his daughter brought this over. Now, when it comes to cleaning these up, and this will be another entirely different video, but can you guys see all of those pits and the marks and everything like that on there? One of the things that you can do is you can take the rounded edge of a planishing hammer and you can actually begin to tap those and planish those out. And once you have that all completely planished out, then you're gonna take your sandpaper and you're going to sand it all nice and smooth. You're gonna finish off with some oil and you're ready to go. So these can be resurfaced fairly easily, but it does definitely take some time and effort to do that. But if your bench block looks like this, don't be afraid to refinish that because it can totally be salvaged. Now the last thing that I have in my studio, and this is new. So I just received this back in February. I got it at the Tucson Gem Show from Microtools. And what it is, is a farrier's anvil. Now this is a 35 pound anvil. Now you can find these anvils in a number of weights. And they are going to range from a couple hundred dollars to thousands of dollars, depending on what you're looking at. Now I figured for me and jewelry making, 35 pounds is probably really all I'm going to need. Unless I really get into larger blacksmithing, forging and things like that, this really is gonna do me pretty well. And quite honestly, for doing a lot of even blacksmithing and forging, this 35 pound farrier handle or anvil will also do very well. Now I have this mounted onto a stump, uh, but like I said, I just lifted it up and brought it over here so I could show you guys what it looks like. The horn on the anvils are really, really nice because you can do a lot of forging, forming, getting the curls, getting swirls, things like that up here. And then you have your nice flat surface here that you can work with. Now, when an anvil rings, a lot of times that can be very painful to your ears. And really, you need to make sure that you're taking very good precaution uh, when it comes to your hearing. So earplugs are a must when you're doing your hammering. But when you're working on an anvil, one of the things that you can do is take a sandbag and place it here on the end, just like that, just lay it there. Like a lot of jewelers that I know uh, would stick their wallet on here. And what that does is it helps deaden that ring when you're hammering away. So that's something that you can kind of think about as a, a little cheat when you're working with one of these. 
All right, so now we've talked a little bit about what the different bench blocks and anvils look like that are available, but how do you maintain these? How do you take care of them? Now, as far as resurfacing, I would show you guys that. However, my children are asleep. Yes, it is probably about midnight and I'm filming. That's how much I love you guys. <laughs> but I will do a different video on how to do all of that. It's definitely a little louder, like I showed you kind of a little demonstration before. You're going to hammer and planish a lot of that out. So it's going to take a little bit of elbow grease and we'll talk about that all later. But as far as general maintenance, making sure that you don't have rust or uh, what do you do if you do have some rust, especially if you're in a more humid environment. So let's take a look at a few of the things that I use here in my studio to help keep my tools rust free. So first and foremost, if I have something that is kind of a surface imperfection and maybe I can see that it's just a little bit here on the top, I'm going to attack it with just some steel wool. Now this is a four aught or a triple or quadruple zero uh, steel wool that I'm using on this and I'm just going to gently rub the surface of my bench block and that's going to take off any top layer of uh, crustiness or whatever else. I can then also add just a little bit of this machine oil or three-in-one oil. You can also use baby oil as well and that's just going to help kind of lubricate and let things you know work things out if there's something kind of sticky on there or whatever the case might be. And then I also use a paper towel just to kind of go back over that. Now that's going to help kind of clean things up. Now, what happens if you already have rust on here? One of the things that I like to have is this product called Never Dull. And I found this when I lived in Ohio. It was very humid in Ohio. And one of the uh, metalsmiths had suggested that I try this. And what it is, is it's called a wadding compound. And it just is like a cotton that's in here. And it has some different chemicals in here. So you probably want to use gloves when you use this. But what you do is you just take off a little section and you're going to rub over your, your piece. And that is going to help remove any of the rust that you have. And you can see, look at that. So let's try it on this little guy because he's got some really bad crap on him. And so what I do is just gently work over the surface area. And you can see, I mean, look at already how much cleaner that is. And you can see everything that it was removing. So I'm going to change to a different area here. Bring my block around. So just in a matter of seconds now, I've removed all of that surface gunk and that rust that was on there. I'm going to go back over this with my steel wool just to make sure I've got all the rest of that crusty stuff off. And then I'll finish that off with my paper towel to remove some of that oil that it placed on there. Now you want to keep the lid on this so that it doesn't go bad or evaporate on there. But anyway, that's one of the things you can do. So let's say we've gone through now and we've taken care of all of the rust. We've removed everything. How do I prevent it from coming back? How do I protect these? Well, you can do a coat of like your three in one or your machine oil, but here's another product that I was introduced to years and years and years ago. It's called Bow Shield T9. It was made by Boeing for their airplanes to kind of help with preventing of rust and corrosion. Now there's two ways that you can use this. So it's just a spray and you can either spray it directly on your item and I just kind of overshot and then you can rub it around with that or you can um, you can spray it onto your paper towel and rub that around. Or another thing, well, okay, first of all, by doing that, that's going to act kind of as a lubricant if I put it on and it does protect it. But here's another really cool thing about this bow shield. Let's say that I spray this on here and then I'm just gonna let it dry. By doing it this way, I've now put a nice coating 
onto the surface of my piece. If I leave this as this dries, it is going to become powdery. So there will be kind of a little white coating on this when I look at it later. Now what's happening is it's just put that coating on there and that kind of blocks out that oxidation that can happen and whatever else. And when I'm ready to use this, then I would come back in and I would wipe this off with my paper towel. And that is going to still leave a little bit of protection on here, but if it's going to be something that I'm not going to be using for a while, I totally just spray a coating of this bow shield on here and I leave it, stick it in my drawer or wherever else I'm going to be and rest assured that it is protected. So now we've talked a little bit about the different bench blocks that are available. I have the track anvil, we have the round ones, we have square ones, we have rectangles, we've got great big ones and little tiny ones. So you have a number of options out there. Now here's what you want to avoid. So there are a lot of very cheap, and I mean cheaply made, bench blocks and they look absolutely gorgeous because they have been chrome plated. You want to avoid those at all costs and usually they are very inexpensive. And the reason that they're inexpensive is because they've bought a cheap piece of steel and they have chrome plated it so that it looks beautiful. Why is it such a bad thing to have something like that? Well, the chrome plating comes off and it is going to leave you a mess. And I told you before that if you have surface imperfections on your bench block or your hammer, well that's going to transfer over to your pieces of metal. And that means that there's a lot of extra cleanup for you. So avoid anything that has chrome plating. Spend a couple of extra dollars. So you can find bench blocks that are going to be $10-$15. And you're also going to find some that are anywhere from 30 or 25 even to like $120. It's definitely worth making that step up to the 20 to $40 range on those bench blocks. I would highly suggest you do some research and check some of these out. But don't go skimpy just because it's inexpensive. A lot of times when you do that, you get to spend your money twice. Once on the bad one, and then again to actually buy the good one that you probably should have bought in the first place, but you were too cheap to do it. How do I know? Because I've spent my money more than twice. So take it from me. Go ahead and save up your pennies and buy the right one to begin with. So I hope this helps you guys have a little better understanding of different bench blocks and what are available to you. As always, I will include links down in the description so that you guys can check out some of my favorites and see if those will work for you as well. If you like the video, be sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you guys get the notifications for when I post new videos. I try to get out two videos a week, Tool Time Tuesday and Weekend Jewelry School. Thanks so much for joining me this week for Weekend Jewelry School, and I will see you guys in the next class session. Have a good weekend.